I have told you these things. Why? So that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. I have told you these things to joy. It is your birthright. It is your legacy, church, to not only have joy, but to have defiant joy. I need somebody to talk to me. I was thinking to myself because somebody might say to me this morning, well, you know, I just, I don't have it. I, I wish I did. Here's the beauty of it. Joy itself, that's, that's a noun. But rejoice is the verb. And so you sometimes, you've got to verb your way back to the noun. I need to know if anybody knows what I'm talking about. If you do not have joy, you rejoice your way back to joy. Does anybody know what I'm saying? You don't just sit there and go, I don't know what's happened to my joy. I don't know who's got it. I don't know what I'm going to do about it. I've lost my No, you rejoice your way back to your joy. So we have to do work and do all these things to achieve joy? What? No. Beth, you are absolutely wrong, but that is the least of your problems. Well, welcome to Real Talk with Jordan Riley, where the real talk does not come from me. It comes directly from God's word. And before we get started, please consider subscribing to this channel and give it a thumbs up. Today, we're going to be looking at Beth Moore, who is a very popular Bible teacher. And we're going to see why she's a false teacher and why the things that she believes and teaches are so dangerous. And I've broken this into three points, so it'll be easy for you to follow along. Are you ready to get going? Let's do it. Number one, Beth's false revelations. Now, she says this a lot, and this is where we're gonna start, and that she says God speaks to her. Oh, I, I got back to my room, I'm just like, whoa, Lauren, I'm so, I'm, I mean, dude, I'm, 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 are you afraid you're gonna break me? I mean, it was break, and I had the strangest sense, and the reason why I believed it was God is because this could not have been further from my mind and it sounds just like something he would say. I had the strangest feeling that God spoke over my heart and went, I built you for this. I built you for this. And I said out loud, you built me for stress? You know what I heard in my heart? Yes! And I was like, okay. Now, every time Beth does this, you'll watch and you will see that she never uses scripture. It's always something that popped into her head or God showed this in a vision or a dream or a hunch or something like that. Now, is God doing that? No. Hebrews chapter one, verses one and two is very clear that God did speak this way in sporadic times to the prophets and the fathers of the Old Testament. But now he's spoken through his son, who we have full record of in scripture. Everything God had to say is written in the word of God. We don't need to go anywhere. We don't need to try to conjure it up or go hear from somebody else. No, everything we need is in the word. It is absolutely sufficient. And obviously we have Hebrews 4.12. So the God's word is living and active. It is speaking to us today. Every time you read God's word, you hear God speaking to you. That's what it's all about. Also, Beth makes many things up. Watch this. And as plain as day, God put a picture in my mind of a metro uh, bus stop in Houston. And I jotted down on a note what I felt like God was saying. He didn't talk to me out loud. I felt it in my spirit. I, j I jotted down on a piece of paper, take money with you. I will show you who to give it to. I mean, and you know, and I thought that morning, what if I'm making this up? And I thought, well, you know what? So what? He's not going to despise me because I thought I understood him to say so-and-so. Sadly, many false teachers do this a lot. You know, again, God showed me a vision. God spoke to my heart. He gave me a picture. He spoke this, all these different things. It's to insulate themselves against criticism. That's what it's really about because how do we really know what God supposedly said or didn't say? So it really keeps people that are skeptical quiet. But the problem is if you go to 1 John 4, 1, we are to test the spirits to find out if this is true or not. And when we test things against God's word, we can see clearly that God is not doing this. Because if God was speaking to Beth Moore and he was still speaking and just, just speaking to everybody, 
then we do not have an op- we don't have a closed canon. We have an open canon of scripture. And you can just get your pen and write in the back of the Bible everything God's supposedly saying. That's why the devotional Jesus calling is pure heresy. Because Sarah Young, she says, hey, I went there and I tuned in just right to God and Jesus started just speaking to me and I wrote down everything he was saying. Lies, blasphemy, heresy. God is not speaking anymore outside of his word. Everything he's had to say is already contained right there in scripture. Let's also look at right there in in, uh, Jeremiah 23, 16. I want you to see this. It says, quote, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who are prophesying to you. They are leading you into futility. They speak a vision of their own imagination, not from the mouth of God. And that is what Beth is doing. She's literally leading people astray with the nonsense inside of her head. Also, she claims that she gets visions and pictures in her head. Oh, goody, goody. As clear as I'm talking to you now, the Lord spoke to my heart. Been very few times I've ever heard God be this articulate with me. And I'm telling you word for word, these words came into my heart. I'm not asking you to witness to him. I'm asking you to brush his hair. I thought, I don't have a hairbrush. <laughs> you know, I was supposed to be thoroughly equipped under all good work. I do not have a hairbrush. I walk over, I get right in front of the man. His head's hanging down like this. I lean down like this. I said, sir, little lady, if you want me to hear you, you're going to have to speak up. Again, no verse backs any of these up. There's no scripture being cited. There's no, let's see what it says in 2 John, whatever. No, let's turn to 3 Beth chapter 5, verse 10. And we're going to see the picture that God supposedly gave her. That is nonsense, okay? No Bible verse ever backs this up. God is not giving visions and hunches and nudges and prophetic words and words of knowledge to people. Why? Because again, his word is absolutely 100% complete, perfect, and sufficient. Now, I want you to see this verse. It's very fascinating. It really plays about what we see in Beth Moore, and that is Proverbs 28, 26. The Bible says that he who trusts in his own mind is a fool, okay? And I believe Beth Moore is a fool. She trusts trusts whatever just pops into her little head, you know, and she's got to tell everybody about it, and everyone just laughing and having a good time. No. But again, Beth claims that she was called by God at 18 years old and she was confused very much. Hmm, I bet she was. Would um, be a lawyer and I thought, I believed that I would go into government. And uh, that's what my grandfather had done. And I I had uh, thought that I would like to do the same thing. And so, but in the middle of college, so I all, I did everything with pre-law in mind for my um, undergrad years, but then, Uh, my calling came right in the middle of it. And it was so confusing because I knew that I had received a call, but the Lord had not given direction. Like there were people that go, I was called to preach or I was called to the mission or I just was called period. The best way I know to explain it is that I sense that the Lord was just going like, you're mine. See, when God calls someone, it's not confusing. And he would never, and I repeat, never call someone to do something that goes against his word, which means that Beth's supposed calling was not by God. It was demonic. You have to see this as we get going. Number two, Beth's false beliefs. She believes in contemplative prayer. The fullness of him who fills all in all. Without any comment, please, let's pause and be still and ask Jesus to speak his word to us. Now, please understand, this is extremely unbiblical and actually it's very creepy, you know, that you just kind of Close your eyes and close off your mind and supposedly hear God speak to you. What? Did Jesus or the apostles ever practice that? No, never. Jesus taught us how to pray in Matthew 6, verses 9 through 15. Very, very clear. When you pray, pray this. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and etc. You have to see that. But again, this is not what Beth is doing. She's saying, just close off your mind. It's all good. You know, we're, and, and, and I want you to see this. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, 15, that we are to pray with our minds, not shut them off, not just sit there and listen, you know, and hope to hear a voice of God. No. And did you notice when we started that video just right there, that Beth was reading from scripture. Then she closed it and said, now we're just going to be quiet and listen for God to speak to you. <laughs> what? When you open the word of God, that is God speaking to you. When you close it, you've just cut out that off. God's not going to just speak to you and go, hey, you, you here's some things I got to tell you, you know? No. God speaks through his word. So open up your Bible and keep reading. Also, Beth preaches to men and is defiant about it. Remember, she was called at 18 to supposedly do this. She is ignoring scripture. And scripture is very, very clear that women are not to preach in church to men. They're to teach women and children. Uh, I believe that's Titus chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. But the, she's preaching to everybody. She's going to churches and just preaching all over the place, violating God's word. Also, she's okay with homosexuality and abortion. And she praises people who stand for those two things. Again, these are false beliefs, and it's a proving that, that Beth Moore violates, ignores, disobeys, and rejects God's word. Number three, Beth's false partnerships. Today, Joyce, um, what God has used you to do and the magnitude of it, what you have to know. God is with you because nobody you could have do done it. No. Do it. Well, I want to be a blessing to Joyce. I said, I know. She's going to be a blessing to me, but how you've blessed her in such uh, magnificent ways. And this, Joyce Meyer, I offer you my respect. Thank you. I offer you my esteem. I offer you my esteem. And I say to you, you are a mighty, mighty woman of God, and you have run and are running your race well. There should be no dispute to this. Beth partners with many other false teachers, which again is commanded to not happen in scripture. This is forbidden, but again, she rejects God's word. And she kind of does, Beth really does whatever Beth wants, whatever pops into Beth's head, whatever feels good for Beth, whatever is good for Beth's you know career, that's what she does. She teams up with the Osteens. Joel and Victoria Eastern, who are the worst heretics pretty much in America, have the biggest church leading most people to hell. Also, Joyce Meyer. Oh, Joyce, you're amazing. I affirm you, love you. God's working and using you, Joyce Meyer. Wrong. That is absolutely unbiblical. Christine Kane, false prophet and false teacher from Hillsong, which is just a horrific church. Brian Houston, the pastor of Hillsong. They buddy buddy up and they're teaming up. And also Beth teams up with many people and is on TBN, which is the most godless, blasphemous channel really in the world. And again, please, through all of this, Beth has a low view of Christ and a low view of scripture. Now she has a high view of herself and a high view of what's in her head, but she does not care what God's word says. She violates it all the time. Beth Moore is someone who is not teaching God's word. She is not obeying God's word. She rejects God's word. And she teaches what feels good. Whatever pops into her head, which never goes along with scripture. And that is why we should mark and avoid Beth Moore.